One of the most common framing devices across entertainment is in media res. That means kicking the narrative off at a later point in the story, which will then be returned to near the end with an entirely new context. It's used fairly frequently in video games too, and while it will often link up to a mid-game sequence, such as Uncharted 2's iconic train opening, every so often it will actually provide a glimpse of the game's final area, set piece or cutscene. The following 10 games, most of them critical darlings praised for their inventive narratives, all kicked things off near the chronological ends of their stories. Whether a result of simple narrative shuffling or more creative time traveling shenanigans, the rest of each game then filled in the lead up to that teased climax. In each case, it always results in a light bulb moment of recognition from us players, as the mystery and uncertainty of what led to those moments is finally brought full circle. I'm Scott from WhatCulture.com and these are 10 video games that started at the end. Also, spoiler alert, check the description below to see what I'm going to be covering. Number 10, Every Max Payne Game. All three Max Payne games opted to kick things off within the same narrative structure, giving players a glimpse of the final battle's aftermath and then setting the rest of the title in the lead up to that showdown. The opening scene of the first game shows Max atop the Aesir Plaza, holding a sniper rifle as he tells the player they were all dead. Lo and behold, it turns out that this scene occurs immediately after Max kills the game's final boss, Nicole Horn, at the very end. Similarly, Max Payne 2 opens with an injured Max laying with Mona Sachs in Alfred Woden's mansion as the police move in, which also happens after the final boss, Vladimir Lem, is killed. Not wanting to change anything, Max Payne 3 then opens with a cinematic showing a brief clip of a wounded Max approaching a severely maimed, unidentified man. Then, in the final minutes of the game, this scene plays out again, revealing the man to be antagonist Armando Becker. In each case, the clear intent is to show players what drove Max to these violent ends. And in each case, it is a very smart use of a classic narrative framing device. Also, while we're here, where the living hell is Max Payne 3 on Switch, and where the living hell is Max Payne 4? Number 9, Final Fantasy XV. As is kinda uncharacteristic for the Final Fantasy series, Final Fantasy XV actually opens with a minute long preview of one of the game's final boss fights. We see a distinctly older version of protagonist Noctis teaming up with his friends as they prepare to do battle with a gigantic fiery monster sat on a throne. As the heat intensifies and the heroes seem to be without a hope in hell of prevailing, we pull back for the game to begin proper. As it turns out, this is a scene from the very end of the game as Noctis and co battle Final Fantasy XV's penultimate boss, a revived and corrupted Efreet. Given Efreet's esteem amongst Final Fantasy fans, it's pretty amusing in retrospect that they unknowingly glimpsed him a good 30 or so hours before this fight actually took place, with most people assuming it was probably going to be Arden's final form instead. Number 8, Monkey Island 2, LeChuck's Revenge. In lighter and more tongue-in-cheek fashion, we have the classic adventure game Monkey Island 2 LeChuck's Revenge, which opens with protagonist Guybrush Threepwood dangling from a rope in a treacherous pit whilst holding a treasure chest. Guybrush is then met by his love interest, Elaine Marley, who asks how he got himself into this situation, prompting him to regale her with the chain of events that led to his current predicament, providing areas for the rest of the game. We return to Guybrush hanging from his rope about 15 minutes from the end, where he reveals that he's been hanging like this for around three days. Almost Immediately after he finishes recalling his adventure, however, his rope snaps and he falls into a tunnel where he's confronted by the villainous LeChuck. Even better, there's a sequence earlier in the game where Guybrush can die, and if this happens, players are then thrown back to the rope scene, only for Elaine to note this paradox before you're given another chance to get it right. Number 7, Tomb Raider Chronicles. Tomb Raider Chronicles is an especially interesting example because the previous Tomb Raider game, The Last Revelation, was originally intended to be the final one in the series. However, after Eidos Interactive ordered a follow-up, developers Core Design had to figure out a way to bring Lara Croft back from the dead after Last Revelation ended with her seemingly being buried alive. Chronicles' gimmick then is that it's mostly a prequel, with Lara's former associates gathering to share stories of her previous adventures. This serves as Chronicles' framing device, and so despite the game's levels darting around various periods in Lara's life, the actual present day story unfolds in a single room over just a few hours within Croft Manor. The game ends by returning to the present, with Lara's friends toasting her before the scene shifts to reveal that she had been discovered alive in the ruins of the Great Pyramid of Giza all along. Number 6, Second Sight. Okay, this thing is a super cool twist on the in-media res trope. Second Sight begins with protagonist John Vadek waking up strapped to a hospital bed with no memory but bestowed with an increasingly powerful array of psychic abilities. Throughout this game, you experience flashbacks which appear to slowly unfurl John's backstory. But the game's climactic plot twist is that the flashbacks are actually the present. 
Confused? Well, basically all the scenes you thought were taking place in the present after waking up in the hospital are actually visions of a potential future witnessed by John, who does also possess secret powers of precognition. Because video games. The final 10 minutes of the game then loop back around to the opening scene as John interacts with the future version of himself still strapped to that hospital bed and eventually manages to save the day. It's mind melting to even think about it, but certainly one of the most creative timey wimey twists in video game history. Number 5, Oddworld Abe's Odyssey. Abe's Odyssey begins with our lovable Mudokan hero Abe detailing the harsh conditions of his work, that is also known as his enslavement, at meat processing plant Rupture Farms. Barely a minute into the opening cutscene though, it's revealed that Abe is regaling his story to us after having been captured and hung up by the villainous Moloch, the Glucken. The rest of the game then flashes back to reveal how Abe ended up in this situation, concluding with Abe being caught by Moloch. The ending cutscene then plays out, and if you saved more than 50 of the game's 99 Mudokans, they will use their abilities to kill Moloch and save Abe. If you saved less than half of your fellow friends though, you'll just be left to drop into a big old meat grinder. Number 4, Call of Duty Black Ops. COD Black Ops begins as protagonist Alex Mason is imprisoned within an interrogation room, seeing him being asked a ton of questions by an unseen person. The interrogation is ultimately a framing device for the rest of the game, which largely transpires in flashbacks as Mason recounts various missions to the people talking to him. However, the final 25 minutes circle back around to the end of the interrogation itself, where it's revealed that Mason's captors are actually the good guys, and they're trying to extract information from Mason's brainwashed mind in order to prevent World War III. The final level of the game then sees Mason teaming up with them to successfully take down the villainous Dragovich and bring his maniacal plot to an end. Number 3, Prince of Persia The Sands of Time the first of the 3D Prince of Persia's is one of the most innovative third-person action-adventure games of the last 20 years and a personal favourite, defined by the player's ability to use the dagger of time to rewind time and fix any mistakes. It felt goddamn glorious and I miss this series every day. This general idea of playing with time extends to the game's story too, which begins with the prince telling the tale of his adventure to an unknown third party. The rest of the game plays out, climaxing with the death of the prince's companion Farah, after which our hero stabs a magical hourglass, causing time to rewind all the way back to the beginning of the game. We then see the prince visit a now alive Princess Farah, revealing that he was telling the story of the game to her all along. After this, the player battles Vizier as the final boss, and that's pretty much all she wrote, while Farah is left believing that the original rewound events of the game were nothing more than a fable spun by the prince. To make the twist even cuter, it is hinted at throughout the game when you die, as the prince makes various remarks about how things were supposed to go. Kinda genius, to be honest. Kinda genius. Number 2, God of War, 2005. The original 2005 God of War boasts one of the most memorable instances of this whole trope, as literally the very first moments of the game show a forlorn Kratos leaping off a cliff, seemingly to his death. At that moment, however, we're thrown back to three weeks prior, with the rest of the game building up to that climactic explanation as to why our hero tried to kill himself in the first place. After defeating final boss Ares, we return to that grim opening, or rather now, the ending. It's revealed that the gods have refused to erase Kratos' nightmares of his violent past, and feeling dejected, he decides to throw himself off the cliff in order to end his suffering. However, this time round, we see that Kratos is in fact pulled from the watery depths by Athena, who rewards him for his duties by offering him a place at Mount Olympus as the new god of war. Number 1, Spider-Man Web of Shadows Another personal favourite and one of the coolest Spider-Man games ever made. Spider-Man Web of Shadows boasts one of the most ambitious and intriguing narratives of any Spidey game, with its opening sequence actually taking place during the game's epic climax. The intro cinematic shows off Venom and his symbiote attacking Manhattan, and Spidey being reunited with Mary Jane before being knocked out by a shadowy entity. Around 30 minutes before the very end though, we finally return to this opening, with Spidey even breaking the fourth wall to comment, well that brings us up to date. At this point it's revealed that the unknown assailant attacking Spidey was actually a symbiote infected black cat, and the rest of the game sees Spidey team up with his fellow heroes to stop Venom's assault. The whole thing is just absolutely badass and this game game's aerial combat system is one of the absolute best. For now though, those are just a selection of awesome games that end where they begin. Let me know your favourites down in the comments below, and if you have time, please check out the What Culture Gaming podcast. For now, I've been Scott from whatculture.com, and I'll catch you soon.